Today we are going to do a rereading of From Seed to Plant by Gail Gibbons. Remember, this is an informational text which gives facts about a topic. As we read, we're going to be looking for pictures and labels, facts and details, diagrams that help explain the topic. We will also be pausing as we read to discuss some questions together out loud. Most plants make seeds. A seed contains the beginning of a new plant. Seeds are different shapes, sizes, and colors. All seeds grow into the same kind of plant that made them. Many plants grow flowers. Flowers are where most seeds begin. If we look up at our picture, we can see labels. Tulip, daisy, rose, pea, buttercup, corn. What do the flowers and vegetables in the picture on this page have in common? How are they different? A flower is made up of many parts. If we look at our picture up above, I'm going to start right at the bottom. It says, at the bottom of the pistil are tiny egg cells called ovules. <clears throat> In the center of the flower is the pistil. The sticky part at the top of the pistil is the stigma. Stamens make yellow powder called pollen. The parts of the flower around the pistil are the stamens. We can also see the labels stem, sepal, and petal. What kind of plant will a rose seed grow into? A corn seed? How do you know? I see and analyze the text question at the bottom. Text and graphic features is our featured skill for this week. How does the diagram on page 351 of the flower help you better understand the information on this page? <clears throat> we see in the text that it says a flower is made up of many parts. This text and graphic feature this diagram helps me understand the parts better because it shows me what each of the parts look like, as well as explains the purpose for each of these parts of the flower. It's important when talking about our text and graphic features to talk about and understand the additional information it gives us something more than what our basic text gave us. Before a seed can begin to grow, a grain of pollen from the stamen must land on the stigma at the top of the pistil of a flower like itself. This is called pollination. Pollination happens in different ways. Often, wind blows pollen from flower to flower. Bees, other insects, and hummingbirds help pollinate, too. While they visit flowers for their sweet juice called nectar, pollen rubs onto their bodies. Then they carry the pollen to another flower where it comes off onto its pistil. <clears throat> Let's look back at the first paragraph on this page. Let's reread it together. Before a seed can begin to grow, a grain of pollen from the stamen must land on the stigma at the top of the pistil of a flower like itself. This is called pollination. Now, this paragraph has words I read for the first time in the diagram on the previous page. So I can come back here 
and I can find my stamen. Oh, stamens, the part of the flower around the pistil are the stamens. Okay, the stigma, oh, is up here on the top. The sticky part at the top of the pistil is the stigma. And the pistil, if I follow this down, is this long tube-like part in the center of the flower is the pistil. Now, when I think about those parts and I went back to the diagram to remind myself what they are, I can better understand the different parts of the flower. So now I can understand how the pollen moves and how pollination works. Unless I understand fully all of these parts and come back and look at this diagram over again, I won't get a full view of what each of these stages of a seed growing actually is. So let's continue on. Notice for a moment, sorry, I'm going to backtrack for a minute. Notice how I stopped to monitor and clarify myself. And that simply meant I went back to the diagram and used it to help me gain understanding of what we saw in this picture and what we read in the top paragraph. Let's continue reading. <clears throat> if a pollen grain from a flower lands on the pistil of the same kind of flower, it grows a long tube through the pistil into an ovule. This is the beginning of a seed. The seeds grow inside the flower, even as the flower begins to die. As the seeds become bigger, a fruit or pod grows around them. The fruit or pod protects the seed. Now, what should I do if I don't remember what these parts are, a pistil or an ovule? What can I do to help me monitor and clarify my reading and understanding? Yes, I can go back page 351 and look at my diagram of the different parts. Nice job. When the fruit or pod ripens, it breaks open. The seeds are ready to become new plants. Some seeds fall to the ground around the base of the plant where they will grow. Some pods or fruits open and the seeds pop out. Sometimes when birds eat berries, they drop the seeds. Other seeds fall into streams, ponds, rivers, or the ocean. There they travel on the water until they stick to dirt along the shore. The wind scatters seeds. Some seeds have fluff on them that lets them float to the ground like tiny parachutes. Others have wings that spin as they fall. Wow, I absolutely love the visualization that last paragraph gave us. Close your eyes and listen to the words the author uses to get us to picture these seeds scattering. The wind scatters seeds. Some seeds have fluff on them that lets them float to the ground like tiny parachutes. Can't you just picture those parachutes slowly and gracefully floating to the ground? Now picture dandelions. Remember when they get all fluffy and you to make a wish and they scatter and float. Those are the seeds that scatter in the wind that we just read about. Let's continue on. Animals help scatter seeds too. They hide acorns and nuts in the ground. Some seeds have hooks that stick to the fur of animals or people's clothes. Later, they drop off onto the ground. Ooh, look up at that image up here. Look at this animal helping to scatter seeds. What might happen if seeds were not scattered? What do you think? the author's purpose was for what we have read. 
on page 354, 355, and 356. Let's take a look at this other image up here on 356. Do you see these seeds stuck to the part of these pant legs on a person? Have you ever been outside and gotten these stuck on your pants or on your shoes? I know that when we've been outside, sometimes they get stuck inside your socks and boy, do they hurt. These are called burdocks, but this is how they have adapted to their environment so that they can be scattered. When people walk by or animals walk by, it clings to the fur or the clothing. And then when they get dropped off or somebody brushes them off, they fall to the ground. Let's take a look at page 357. A flower bed or vegetable garden is beautiful. Seeds are planted to grow in the gardens. The seeds come in small envelopes or boxes. Directions explain how to plant the seeds and care for the plants. What is the author's purpose for writing this paragraph on page 357? Yes, it's to explain how to plant a garden. Now, I want you to pause for a minute and look back through your story, whether it be your paper copy or back through the pages we've looked at here. And look for all the places where birds and other animals are mentioned. Can you tell me the role animals may play at different times in the life cycle of plants? Take a minute and think about that. When you're ready, you can push play again. We'll continue on. The beginning of a plant is curled up inside each seed. Food is stored inside the seed too. The seed has a seed coat on the outside to protect it. Here we see where they've labeled food. This is a picture of a bean. I know that because it's labeled here in our diagram. Here is the beginning of the plant that they're talking about. See how it's curled up? And here is the seed coat. This is a graphic feature. There are also labels on our graphic feature that help us know the different parts of a seed. A seed will not sprout until certain things happen. First, it must be on or in the soil. Then it needs rain to soak the seed and soften its seed coat. When the sun shines and warms the ground, the seed coat breaks open and the seed begins to grow. This is called germination. A root grows down into the soil. The root takes in the water and minerals from the soil for food. Can you look back and use your text clues, your context clues in that paragraph and tell me what germination means? Also, how does this text and graphic feature help you know what germination means? What additional information does it give you? Up grows a shoot. Green leaves grow up from the shoot toward the sun. The plant grows bigger and bigger. The leaves make food for the plant from the water and minerals in the soil, the sunlight, and the air all around the plant. Here we can see the labels on our diagram, shoot and leaves. What happens from the time a seed is put into the soil until the first shoot grows up? What happens after the first shoot grows up? Can you use our 
transition words like first, next, then, and last to discuss these questions? What I should hear is first, the seed coat breaks open. Second, the seed begins to grow. Third, a root grows down into the soil. Nice job, friends. Let's continue on. Finally, the plant is full grown. Buds on the plant open into flowers where new seeds will grow. Near the end of the selection, the author writes, buds on the plant open into flowers where new seeds will grow. Why does she write this near the end of our selection? How does this help you understand the author's main purpose of writing the selection? That's a tricky question, my friends. That's going towards author's purpose, which you will work a lot more on in third grade. But what is very important for us to understand here is that the author wants the reader to know that a new seed will grow from the old one and the cycle will repeat itself. Let's finish up our story. Many of the foods people eat are seeds, fruits, and pods. They are full of nutrition, vitamins, and minerals, and they are tasty too. Let's stop and think again. Why do you think the author chose to organize the selection by telling the steps of plant growth in order? Now, if we take a look at our final two pages, look what we see. We wouldn't skip this. We would continue reading on. A from seed to plant project. This would be fun for you to do at home as well. How to raise bean plants. One, find a clean glass jar. Take a piece of black construction paper and roll it up. Look, they're showing us how you would roll it up in our diagram. Two, slide the paper into the jar. Fill the jar with water. Three, Wedge the bean seeds between the black paper and the glass. Put the jar in a warm place. Four, in a few days, the seeds will begin to sprout. Watch the roots grow down. The shoots will grow up. Watching your bean seeds while they sprout. Let's pause for a moment and look at this analyze the text cause and effect. What causes the beans to sprout? In the glass container. Go back and reread these four steps and see if you can find the cause. Caring for your bean plants. Step five. Put dirt into a big clay pot. Step six. Carefully remove the small plants from the glass jar. Place them in the soil, covering them up the base of their shoots. Step seven, water them and watch them grow. I have a couple more questions before we finish. Why would you use a glass jar instead of a clay pot up to step four? And what do the seeds need later that they do not need in order for them to sprout? Why do they need soil now? You did a phenomenal job reading here, friends. What's important that we make sure we can do now is we go back and we can talk about and restate the different steps that a plant takes from the beginning as a seed to the end as a plant. Now, your assignment is, in your reader response journal, think about what a seed needs to grow. How do the soil, water, and sun work together to help the seed begin to grow? Write a paragraph to explain. 
Remember to use a topic sentence. Make sure you have details and support those details with text evidence from our story. And then include a concluding sentence to wrap up your paragraph. When finished, make sure you go back and reread what you wrote to make corrections. Fantastic job reading and listening today, my friends. I can't wait to read your paragraphs.